Buonasera. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a lightning talk about uh, painless continuous delivery. I have three minutes to sell you something you don't need. You don't need it because programming is easy, and so is writing the tests. Because BDD and TDD is, is just easy, and we are all professionals, aren't we? You don't need it because deployment is relaxing, and you love to do it, especially on Fridays, because when things break, it's, it's just cool to stay on the weekend uh, in the office instead of hanging out with family and friends. You don't need it because your client loves you, and you love explaining why things broke. After all, it was never your fault, was it? You don't need it because you already work like this. You already do continuous delivery because everyone does continuous delivery, isn't it, like this? And uh, if you need this process, it's a matter of a couple of minutes to set this up, isn't it? So if that was you, then Painless Cloud is not for you. But you, you could contribute to it with your competence, of course, on GitHub, because it's open source. You could still try the service, though, after all, it's free, and it's open source. And there it is. It's painless.cloud, and that's what it looks like. Yeah, and it's really open source, under the hood. And it's a cookie cutter. And the README explains how to use it. So, and I think now I still have a couple, uh, couple of seconds, so I'll show you how it looks like. Oh, no. So it's really meant to be easy to use when the network is working, of course. Oh my gosh. It's still, well, okay. Anyway, so you figure it out because it's all in the about me. And uh, thank you for listening. Okay. Um, so who views you using a um, preprocessor for CSS? Oh, many, many. Uh, who is using less? Who is using stylus? OK, and who is using SAS? So most of us, maybe uh, for you, the, the, that talk is uh, uh, something. So um, if you use uh, SAS, what options do you have? You normally have um, a kind of um, watcher which looks at the directory and looks for um, SCSS files, which may change. Um, recently, we had a Ruby. In, uh, we had some Ruby to install with Compass, or we had, nowadays, we use Node with uh, Galp. Or if we have PyCharm or other IDEs, we can just add a plugin, which looks every time we save something, um, we, that um, file then is compiled to uh, CSS. But um, there is, there is a fundamental problem that we don't access the, um, we access the CSS file in our project, but uh, we uh, reference a CSS file there. Um, so I wrote a small library, for, uh, which is available on GitHub. It's um, an API, uh, API to, call, to compile SAS files directly. Um, it has one template tag, which you can use in your Django and Jinja 2 templates. Um, and it, it has um, some a way to compile um, offline. Um, and it looks for changes during, um, uh, it does not compile every time, it only compiles if, uh, if you did a change. And so in, a, in Django, you would use it like this. Um, if you, if, if you use a form or admin. In 
a template, you, was, you, you would use this one as a source uh, tag instead of the static, um, and you would uh, reference the file directly with SCSS. And if you want to do a deployment where you have uh, CSS files to deploy on the server and you don't want to do the compilation step on the server, you can just invoke compile SCSS and afterwards collect static and then everything um, is a trans is looked and you yes <laughs> and you can just uh, deploy it. Thank you, Jakob. And once once more, thank you everyone for for attending this first day of Jankun 2017. Enjoy your dinner at Promiser or whenever in Florence, wherever in Florence, and we are confident that you will have a great dinner and great time, and see you tomorrow. Thank you so much.